Hi, I'm Vance, and welcome to Repair and Replace. The defrost thermistor is a sensor that monitors the temperature during a defrost cycle. It's used in refrigerators that have a main control board. If the thermistor is faulty, then ice will build up and the refrigerator will not cool properly. In this episode, first we'll learn how it all works. Then we'll access and test the thermistor. Finally, we'll see how to install a new one. This applies to some bottom freezer and side-by-side -side refrigerators. All refrigerators work in the same basic way. When cooling is needed, the cold control sends power to the cooling circuit. The compressor pushes the refrigerant through the system. In the freezer, heat is extracted by the evaporator coils and is released through the condenser coils behind the refrigerator. This process continues until the set temperature is reached. Each time the door is opened, humid air enters the fridge. This moisture condenses and freezes around the evaporator coils. If left unchecked, a buildup of ice will prevent the refrigerator from cooling properly. Modern refrigerators have a defrost system. This includes a defrost timer or controller, a heating element, and a thermostat or thermistor. When the cycle begins, the defrost control shuts off power to the compressor and the fans. This prevents the refrigerator from cooling while the heater is active. Next, power is sent to the heating element, which melts the ice on the coils. The water flows into the drain pan under the fridge and evaporates over time. The heating element continues to heat until the control board disconnects power. Once the time is up, power switches back to the cooling circuit. Now if the defrost thermistor fails, then the defrost cycle will not run and ice will begin to build up. To begin, you might need a screwdriver or nut driver and a multimeter. You might also need a towel and a heat gun. In some models, you might need wire strippers and silicone. Keep in mind, there is some variation between models and not all refrigerators will have the same parts. You can enter your model number on the Amory Supply website to see a parts breakdown. This can be helpful to show you which parts are in your refrigerator and where they are located. First, slide the refrigerator out from the wall. When there is enough room, unplug the cord to disconnect the power. In this case, you can work on the refrigerator in place with it still against the wall. Since the evaporator fins are sharp, it's best to wear cut-resistant gloves. To access the evaporator coils, you'll have to remove the screws to the freezer cover panel. Lift up the mounting tabs and remove the panel. If the fan is mounted to the panel, you might need to disconnect the wire harness. In a side-by-side -side fridge, the steps are the same. If your model has a bottom freezer, then you'll have to remove the door to access the freezer components. You can see how to do this in the video linked below. If there is a large buildup of ice, then you'll have to defrost the freezer to gain access to the evaporator coils. First, 
Place a towel at the bottom of the refrigerator to catch any water. To melt the ice, you can leave the freezer door open, but that will likely take many hours. To speed this up, you can soak a cloth in warm water and wipe down the frost. Additionally, you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun on a low heat setting. As the ice starts to melt, you can chip it into smaller pieces. Once it's clear, remove the screws to the freezer cover panel. Lift up the mounting tabs and remove the panel. If the fan is mounted to the panel, you might need to disconnect the wire harness. Now remove the ice around the evaporator coils. Be careful and avoid chipping away ice on the coils, as they are easily damaged. If you end up puncturing the coils, the refrigerant will leak out. This can only be repaired by a certified technician and is very expensive to fix. Once the ice is removed, dry off the freezer. If necessary, let it air dry. First, disconnect the wires. In most cases, the thermistor is mounted to the coils by a small clip. Simply release the clip to remove the thermistor. In some cases, there is no wire connector, so you might have to cut the wires. The thermistor is a heat sensitive resistor. As the temperature changes, so does the resistance. The control board monitors the resistance to determine the temperature. To test the sensor, it can be helpful to use a resistance chart, which is sometimes printed on the tech sheet. The tech sheet is normally behind the kick plate. It also might be mounted at the back or will be hidden under one of the top hinge covers. Now set the multimeter to the ohms or resistance setting. Next, touch the probes to each terminal. At room temperature, we're getting a reading of close to 11,000 ohms. If the resistance is more than 10% off, or if there is no resistance and no continuity, then the sensor is faulty and should be replaced. Clamp the new thermistor onto the coils in the same spot as before. Next, reconnect the wires. If you had to cut the wires, then you'll have to strip a quarter inch of insulation off the end. Align the wires and attach the wire nuts. Next, Apply silicone to the connection. Now let it air dry. Align the freezer cover panel. If needed, reconnect the wire harness. Now Tighten the mounting screws. Plug in the cord to reconnect the power. Now slide it back into place. Make sure to leave a couple of inches of space between the refrigerator and the wall. This will allow for proper airflow. Now test the refrigerator to see if it's working properly. Now if the defrost system still isn't working, then it could be an issue with another component. You can see how to troubleshoot this in the video linked below. If you like this and want to see more tutorials and informational videos, 
then subscribe to our channel. And if you need help, you can call or visit an Amory location to talk with our knowledgeable staff. Thanks for watching.